welcome back to the Daily Dope Show. And uh, I guess I'm going to just, I have to do a quick story about this because basically there's still a lot of dispensaries out there that are, are stayed open um, throughout the whole thing where the medical marijuana licensing board member, actually two of the members, um, one a former state police sergeant, Don Bailey, and the other, uh, Rick Johnson, who basically used to be a lobbyist and used to be the Republican Speaker of the House, um, basically involved in the, you know, right here, Rick Johnson, he, he was basically an insider who's been on the side of taking over marijuana since, you know, responsible Michigan had like a petition drive that they wanted to do to get it on the ballot where only 10 companies would run the whole marijuana industry in Michigan. And this was more than just medical that they wanted. They didn't get that. Everybody laughed at it when they heard about what the petition was about. And then, so they cowered back into the dark shadows and devised a way that they could take over the whole fucking industry. So they passed this law last September, the Medical Marijuana Licensing Facilities Act, as you can see with a bunch of lobbyists and other people with ties to the medical marijuana industry. And, I mean, also the prosecutors and judges and police that used to arrest you. They were all involved in writing the rules, which set up this board, Medical Marijuana Licensing Board, who people can handpick to put on it, like the governor picks people. Um, and there's certain rules about who these people can and can't be, but it didn't say anything about they can't be, you know, former Speaker of the House who lobbied for this and did that. And he didn't say anything about the former police state police sergeant that was in charge of, you know, dozens of raids of medical marijuana since the law passed. Didn't say anything about that, about someone like that not being on the board. But somehow, 250 plus thousand people in Michigan that have medical marijuana cards have to trust this board to do anything reasonable for the patients. That without the patients, quite frankly, this program wouldn't exist. If we didn't believe in medical marijuana somewhat, there wouldn't be that many patients. You know, for for the longest time, these people that I've been talking about, these responsible Michigan type people, and that's the that's literally the name of their lobby group, Responsible Michigan, and they've been trying to take marijuana over for quite some time. I mean, first they were out there just trying to stop marijuana from happening. They're the prohibitionists. They used to lock you up for this shit, and they probably there's probably members that still are involved in the locking people up and taking away your rights and shit like that. They fought against everything. They fought to get it. So you had to have this locked box in your in your trunk with weed in it. They fought for that shit. That's them. I mean, these guys are at every turn trying to neuter and um, undermine the will of the people. And meanwhile, they're in the background crafting a way to take over the whole fucking thing. And one of the ways that they were going to do it is to squash the competition so that when their, their buddies get go up for these licenses and get them, then they don't have a bunch of competition, which quite frankly is just people that have already been involved in the, um, in the industry, you know, especially the dispensary, uh, owners. And if you find out about any really big grow operations, uh, yeah, of course they want to shut those down too. Um, right now, the dispensaries that are open, which is not for very much longer. Today is November 4th, um, and supposedly by December 15th, the state and everybody's municipalities that voted to have facilities in their towns are supposed to have these applications ready for people that want to start these marijuana businesses and medical marijuana businesses in Michigan. And according to the board and Laura and everybody else, that's the day, December 15, when if you are a dispensary and you are open, then you definitely need to turn the sign around to close on that day. Um, 
that and the contention is is that you know Don Bailey and Rick Johnson wanted to shut down these dispensaries back in September. You know, when they first announced this, it was, you know, basically like everybody freaked out, patients complained, Laura was getting phone calls and they decided, "Hey, we got to we we can't just shut them down." So a few things happened that indicated that they, you know, that Don uh that Bailey and Johnson basically were just you know members that could do whatever they were they were given the power to do as this medical marijuana licensing board that didn't give them super secret powers or superpowers to make new rules and laws and to uh set off a giant um law enforcement sting operation or anything like that laura kind of wanted to be like hey by the way we got more power than you guys so we're the actual Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs. You're just a little board that's there to approve or disapprove um, people's applications, quite frankly, and to make and promulgate rules in the Medical Marijuana uh, Act. The new Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act. Because there's a lot of little details that everybody's probably scratching their heads like, hmm, how are they going to, you know, price this or weigh that or make limits for this or that? Or, you know, there's all these little details that need to be worked out. And that's what this uh, licensing board really is, is there for. Um, quite frankly, I think that they, along with Laura, should get together and hammer out a way for caregivers or for that matter, just somebody that grew 12 plants for themselves. I mean, if somebody grew cannabis and medical marijuana and it was of the quality of medical marijuana, as in it would pass a test, it has the proper amount of THC, CBD, terpenoids, and all the other things that it's supposed to have, plus it doesn't have any contamination or mold or bugs or fungus or whatever you want to test it for, and sell their extra or what we've called overage since the law was made and enacted in 2008 that allowed caregivers to grow 12 plants for per patient and clearly the law my my problem always was with it was that clearly you're producing way more cannabis than you're allowed to actually possess so as soon as the harvest is done and ready to go and it's ready to you know ship out you can give your patient their maximum amount and then you can have your maximum amount and you can even have as a caregiver you can have the maximum amount that you can have for the patient too so for the patient i can have two and a half ounces and the patient can have two and a half ounces beyond that i got to get rid of the rest on 12 plants <laughs> the law was that was my biggest problem with the law Yet, every time you heard about some kind of a gray area or the law is too vague, no one ever mentioned what you what are we going to do about this overage. That was never a deal. What they did do is they're like, oh, we don't have anything for dispensaries in the law, so we can just go arrest people that open dispensaries. Even when local municipalities have set up their own rules and, you know, told dispensaries to pay a some kind of a fine not a fine but like a red you know a local licensing thing for the municipality even after all that the state has still raided and busted and taken down dispensaries for the simple crime of providing people with medical marijuana <laughs> and uh so where are we at with all this shit now well the latest thing is that laura has put out this memo i guess saying that you can stay open for now if you're a dispensary and despite this between the time that don bailey said hey we're gonna you know we, you better shut them down and he even said that he's gonna have a say in your license so if you don't shut down after that september i don't know what it was like 15th deadline he was gonna make sure that your license didn't get approved well that's pretty weird because you're only one person out of a five member board or even if you got your friend johnson with you there's still three other people that get to vote on it so that's that was kind of a threat it was a little empty but a, but not really because this guy has a lot of pull with the police he's a former state police sergeant 
And I'm guessing, especially up north, he has a lot of uh, police friends and people in the state police that are listening to everything he's saying. And uh, since then, there's been raids. There has been raids of dispensaries in areas where, like I just said, for example, they had ordinances in their own towns. Or for maybe they didn't. But they had, like, the okay from the local police and everybody else because, hey, you know, like, if, as long as the local police, and I've told people this many times on these videos over the last year about Michigan and about dispensaries, that if you're running a dispensary, it pretty much is on you to go check out your local police, town hall, ask everybody how they feel about what you're doing. I mean, every other business has to. And you know they're really when they crack down on weed businesses, it isn't just the tax assessor and, you know, the property or the uh, people that work at town hall or the local police. It's the fucking state boys and full military gear coming in, kicking in your door, taking all your property, giving everybody felony charges. So, yeah, that, we've seen that happen between these empty threats in September and now. And so now what are we doing? After, after receiving hundreds of complaints from medical marijuana card holders that they would be without the product they need for their health and extended for an extended period of time, the State Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs rever reversed itself Wednesday and decided to let dispensaries stay, opening, stay open during the licensing process. Let's break that down a little bit before we move on. Um, so the cardholders, the patients, and even the caregivers uh, are pretty mad about this whole rearrangement happening instantly. Um, when something's been working pretty good, why fix it? If, if it isn't broken, why fix? Why try to fix it? They're just trying to redo the whole thing. And we know why, because they, they want to change the, um, the guard, so to speak. Instead of having all these caregivers given their extra... Uh, products over to the dispensaries um they want that to be no more a thing no longer a thing and now to stay open during the licensing process does that mean that they get to stay open until they get approved after they submit a license or wouldn't if they get rejected and they were open for like five years already all of a sudden they their license got rejected and there's a lot of ways that your license could get rejected in all these ways that the licenses could get rejected, we found out our rules that were made by the actual lobbyists. Nobody ever listened to the actual caregivers or anybody that might want to get in the, the new industry that's a small business owners because the only people that are really going to be involved in this new shit is the really highly, you know, connected, ultra-rich players. <laughs> And I might have mentioned Responsible Michigan. There's also a couple of uh, uh, lobby groups that represent, that are, you know, straight up much more. And if you know who the much mores are, you got Dennis Muchmore and his wife. Um, they're, they're huge lobbyists and people that work for Governor Snyder and Nestle Corp. So that's who they are. They're not poor. <laughs> They're not small business. They're not middle class. So the department had come up with a ruling in September that dispensaries should close by December 15th, which is the day that applications um, for five, uh, I'm sorry, December 15th, which is the day that applications for five categories of licenses become available or risk losing their chances of getting one of these lucrative licenses. But medical marijuana card holders, more than 272,000 in Michigan, worried that the lapse of time between applications and licenses being awarded by the state early next year would leave many of them without access to the product they use to treat a variety of ailments from cancer to epilepsy. Now, they're just talking about when the application gets awarded, but what about after that? I mean, you still have to wait for the, the growers that got awarded growing licenses in December to come up with a crop and all this. So the regulated weed that comes from the testers isn't going to come for a while. So are we going to grandfather in these old crops and stuff too? Or, I mean, that's, that's just some more things that I'm concerned about and more things that could create a longer lapse than what they keep alluding to. 
I think the lapse is going to be more like you're, you're not going to see product until July or August, maybe even September when things really start rolling um, to keep up with demand. So I think we're going to see a lot more problems than what they're alluding to here. And I will cite you, uh, not Utah. <laughs> I will cite Oregon as an example of the exact same fucking thing that happened. Their regulations, when their new stringent regulations kicked in, um, they were kind of left holding the bag on all the old products that didn't have, uh, you know, proper testing or whatever. And then also they had a lot of producers that weren't regulated anymore. So they had to figure out something else. And if that happens here, we're going to have serious problems. The state approved an emergency rule Wednesday that will allow existing dispensaries that have gone through an approval process in the community where they operate to stay open while they go through the state licensing process. And again, on that note, if you're a dispensary and you never went to your local area and seen how they feel about it or have any like, okay, or whatever it is, I mean, that's where they're going to start, you know, and I think they're going to start doing that right now. They're not even going to wait till December to do that. If you don't have a license or whatever your local town gave you a nod, if you, they just gave you a verbal nod, I'd get that on paper. And if they gave you something on paper, I'd make sure that it says that everything you're doing is okay with them and whatever, you know. So that's your protection until you put in an application in December and then everything else is, is on the new system, you know, whether or not you're going to be pulled in or not. Patient input played a big factor, said Andrew Brispo, director of the state's Bureau of Medical Marijuana Regulation. When we looked at the feedback, especially from people with the greatest difficulty of access, we wanted to ensure that those folks would have access to their medicine. The ruling goes against the feelings of two members of the Michigan Medical Marijuana Licensing Board, retired state police officer Don Bailey and Chairman Rick Johnson, who wanted the dispensaries to shut down even sooner than December 15th. But Brisbo said board members were made aware of the ruling uh, and would honor its impact. Quote, administrative rules have the effect of law and the board can't make decisions outside the confi confines of the rule, he said. So again, Brisbo basically just exercising Laura's authority over, you know, kind of flexing the muscle a little bit. Um, with the December 15th deadline looming, legislators in both the House and Senate had proposed legislation that would have allowed dispensaries to stay open during the transition to the fully regulated market. Both those bills only got one hearing and no vote. So there you have it on that stuff that we seen early. Good, good try though, guys. Um, quote, we're really excited that the department is working to allow patients to continue accessing medicine in a safe way during the transition period, said Senator David Mizak, a Democrat from Dearborn Heights, who is one of the sponsors of the bill. Quote, it doesn't matter if it's a legislative fix or, or the emergency rules. We're just in favor of something that's going to guarantee safe access. <clears throat> Senator Rick Jones, Grand Ledge Republican, another sponsor of the legislation, said after hearing uh, from medical marijuana patients that he was all in favor of allowing dispensaries to stay open. Quote, certainly I want the dispensary, I want dispensaries to follow the law and get licensing, but there does need to be a transitioning period. And as the representative of the Epilepsy Foundation stated at, at our hearing, it's a matter of life and death for some of these people. And I hate to say it, but Republicans always have to see someone just about dying right in front of their face to get the empathy level required to give a fuck about patients. And I'm not just talking about medical marijuana patients either. The medical pot shops that do stay open won't be guaranteed a license from the state, even if they have the blessing of their local community. But the fact that they continue to operate during the licensing process won't hurt their chances for a license. Thank you. That's pretty much all that matters there, except for I really do wish there was a way to grandfather some of these in. Like, if there's no reason not to, you know, like, for example, in Lansing, there is, there's kind of a nonsensical thing going on where they're, they're going to limit the number of dispensaries to 25. Well, there's currently like 70 dispensaries or more. So limiting to 25, you're going to cut 50 people right out of the business. And then you're going to make the ones that, ex that are existing are going to have overwhelming uh, workload. And quite frankly, it's just looking like they're going to only let well-connected people in there just so they can 
you know, sap the market and make all the money. Which is totally absurd, but I mean, if you want to see where all this shit is culminating into the biggest shit storm, I guess Lansing is where you look. Some of the dispensaries that have been operating with permission from their communities had closed down when Laura first came out with the advisory that they should be shut down by the 15th of December. Um, open back up, guys, and get your get your shit together for this licensing process because I guarantee you it's going to be a minefield. Um, Amir Makhled, an attorney representing Advanced Wellness in Detroit, was thrilled by the news. The Detroit dispensary shut down in September after the initial rule came out because their owners didn't want to jeopardize their chance at a license. Quote, it had significant impact on them and their patients. They had to cover all their costs for the building out of pocket. And every one of their patients uh, were in a real bind. Advanced Wellness has three dispensaries in Detroit, but only one of them had gotten approval from the city to operate. So the one on Warren will reopen and the other two will remain closed until they can get approval for a license. There are dispensaries operating all over the state, including Detroit, Lansing, Ypsilanti, Ann Arbor, Flint, and Clio. <laughs> but other dispensaries, especially in northern Michigan, have shut down after police raided the facilities. Eight facilities were, were told to shut down last month by the Grand Traverse County prosecutor's office after sting after a sting operation by a narcotic or not the a narcotics enforcement team led by the michigan state police the applications for five categories of licenses growers processors testers secure transporters and dispensaries will be available from the state on december 15th the michigan medical marijuana licensing board will begin awarding licenses early next year so that's it guys um, good luck out there, be safe, and know that if you are still operating a dispensary, go get some something in paper from your local municipalities, even if it's just the local police station, anything to say that, yes, we're cool, because right now, I'm still thinking that the, the state police are looking to bust somebody before this is all said and done. And we're gonna have another little battle, it looks like, after some of the applications get approved to see if they're still gonna be able to move the product. I mean, they're probably gonna start saying that shit on December 15th. Like, hey, if your product in your dispensary doesn't have regulations, you know, hasn't been regulated according to the regulations, then we can come in there and kick your door in and arrest everybody and give everybody charges and take all your property. Because still, we still have this situation where the, the fucking police are the regulators, the police are the code enforcers, and instead of just some kind of license fear, it's just, it's the, still the same old fear of going to jail. <laughs>